Welcome to Primecast. My name is Jesse. My name is Wyatt. And I'm so sick of saying that. Well, you, your name is Wyatt. Well, I, I'm, I guess I just want to spice things up. I'm changing my name, guys. To what? To, 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 yeah. to uh, Sir Alexander Butlicker. Call me Sir from now on, like a Sir. Yes, sir. Woo! I'm somebody. Um, big big thing is that the Japan fi- officially got the the mainline Prime toys. Take it you didn't get anything this week. Um, oh, check. Oh, my bad. Um, we just I, skip I, routine. I, we yeah. just talked about skipping routine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I I got a second wheel jack. For the customize or to keep in box? Uh, he's hanging on the wall. You're getting a little carried away with this. With this hanging on the wall stuff. Hey, man, my wall looks pretty cool with a whole bunch of figures hanging on it. It does, but, I mean, my wallet looks a lot cooler with all that money in it. And, well. So, uh, that's about all I got. Um, not, not a whole lot else. Well, I got um, one thing, I think. Did I only get one thing? You got your cliff jumper. I got first edition cliff jumper. And you almost cried. I didn't almost cry, but literally the figure as it stands, and this is not to say anything bad about the figure itself, but it makes me sick. Because um, a day or two after I got it, I got a bad stomach flu and the dry heaves. And I'm not trying to gross anyone out, but dry heaves are pretty much when you get sick or regurgitate or vomit, but there is no regurgitant. There is no vomit. So pretty much you're heaving. Yeah, it's throwing up, but there's no end because there's nothing to it. It's probably the most painful part of being sick. Yeah, it's awful. At least like when you're puking, I mean, it doesn't There's some sort of like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, but, but when you're dry heaving, it's just like your stomach is just hurt so fucking bad and um then in the middle of the night out of nowhere i got the worst charlie horse i've ever had in my calf and i was literally screaming i just woke up with it and it was horrible wasn't expecting it sweating in my sleep and awful and this figure the entire time was sitting on my desk so whenever i looked up while being sick i looked at it and after a while it was just like you've made me sick (laughs) and so the figure like i'm sure it won't stay like that um, but that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, but to you be know, it, real, it, that, that is, um, something that's very common. There's one time where I got real, real sick and I actually had to, I, uh, uh I, we we're in, uh, I was in high school and mm-hmm. we're all in the auditorium watching some, um, uh, some play about Anne Frank or something. And I was like, all all morning, I was feeling really bad. And then my friend was sitting next to me, and I'm like, I'm starting to like w- wobble back and forth. I'm like, oh, God, this is going to happen. And I just, oh, no. like, I just said, I, I pushed my friend off to the side, and there's everyone. Everyone in our whole fucking school is in the auditorium. And I just pushed my friend aside. I just projectile vomited all over this girl in front of me <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> i ruined her jacket uh oh, i cool. forget her name but she was kind of like one of the popular girls so i didn't feel too bad oh, i wouldn't feel bad um but one then, day but then that whole hold on my story's not done yet well, but then i went went home i puked all day and every time i went to to the uh toilet there's mm-hmm. like this uh, like that one of those glade air fresheners in a socket right by the toilet and so like for many, many years, if I ever, like, smelled that type of air freshener, I started feeling sick. That, that's, and then um, uh, I have a lot of instances with, with vomit. This is a horrible way to, stop, to start the show off, by the way. But um, uh, uh, one day last year in, in, in uh, high school, it was my first period class, and this was a day I wasn't there. And we had, had this— your first period? Congratulations. I know I, I'm a woman now, and uh, there's this pregnant girl who had already gotten her first period, <laughs> and, uh, and she was last, sitting in her last for at least nine months. 
Anyway, well, she was some stupid, just a stupid ghetto chick that, just whatever. Um, but everyone hated her. Um, and she, um, uh, she was uh. just sitting there. She never talked to anyone because everyone in our class was kind of, you know, not intelligent, but you know, Stupid. weren't, yeah, wasn't ghetto. And so she didn't talk to anyone. And she was, just, she always just sat there. And out of nowhere, she just vomited all over. I guess she vomited all over the back of this other girl. And the other girl's kind of prissy. So in retrospect, it was really funny. And the girl didn't come to school like that. That one chick who vomited on her didn't come to school until she had the baby. And then the one chick didn't come for like two days. And when she came, it was really awkward. And everyone's like, you okay? <laughs> and yeah. And then uh, one time I was at my friend's house. We ate this really weird pizza. It's from a place called Pizza Mart. It's this generic pizza wow. place here. In- <laughs> and it, it was so generic. Well, the pepperoni had made me sick that night. I'm just laying that like he's playing video games. I'm I'm sitting on his bed playing with Star Wars figures. I'm just like, dude, I feel sick. I need something. I, I really don't want to get sick in your house. I feel rude. Like shit, I feel rude eating your food. If I vomit it, vomit here, I'm gonna feel awful. And he gave me this uh, Pepto Bismol tablet. Don't take Pepto Bismol tablets, because three minutes after I took that thing, my stomach exploded in the form of vomit. And when I was when I um, regurgitated in his bathroom. I thought the smell was regurgitant, but it wasn't. It was the smell of his bathroom. So whenever I go to uh, use the restroom at his house, it reminds me of that fateful night and that awkward moment of me just walking out of his bathroom and his parents looking at me going, are you okay? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm better now. And I was fine the rest of the night. And then uh, when Star Wars Episode Two came out, I was young, and um, I'm sitting in the van... At the time, we had a van. I'm just sitting there, and I really wanted this playset. They had this like costume thing of like Anakin Skywalker, and because just because it came with a lightsaber, they hadn't had the lightsabers out uh, at that time yet. But I really wanted a toy lightsaber, and I didn't care about. I wanted the utility belt. That's right. I wanted that too. And I begged my dad, and he's like, "All right, yeah, all right, let's go get it." And I'm sitting in the car, and I just feel this overwhelming, like, urge in my stomach. I'm like. I think I'm going to be sick. I'm going to be sick. And I walk into Toys R Us, and it's like 9 o'clock at night, and they close at 10. And I just walk up to the Star Wars stuff, and I'm like, oh, my God, so much Star Wars. <laughs> right there in front of the aisle. And this was like the Star Wars display. So this is right in front of the store. And because it was late, and they were about to do like close the store and clean up anyway, they just put a wet floor sign in front of the puddle and left it there. Oh, my God. And... It was super embarrassing being in the store because, you know, you're a young kid, staff members come up to you like, hey, you okay, man? And so, and the really cool thing is the the lady who checked us out that night, um, the last time I saw her, and this was in 2002, I saw her like a year ago at the Toys R Us after they relocated. And she was an older lady then. So I, I don't know. I always just wanted to go up to her be like, hey, remember a long time ago? Because you don't think people remember that stuff in retail, but they do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be cool. Like, hey, remember that kid who threw up here a long time ago? And, I don't know, she doesn't, she, she's recognized me a few times, but it, yeah. I don't know. That's our, that's our vomit tale. That was gross. I feel sorry for our <laughs> listeners. That was, that was disgusting. Yeah. But it had to happen. It did. I feel like Tosh.0. Oh. I I fucking love that show. That's my that's my my favorite show on Comedy Central. Uh, but I got first edition Cliff Jumper. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he's it's, so it, much better than the R.I.D. one. I I'm starting to feel sick and I'm holding it. This is, sucks. <laughs> my image of this toy has been tainted forever. But it's a really really good toy. I like the R.I.D. one for things he does different, like the legs. The legs on the R.I.D. one are really good. And yeah. These ones aren't bad. It's just kind of bland, and he's a rectangle. That's what really distracts me. He's, he's a prism, and it's, it's not bad. It's just distracting. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's really cool. I really dig the flip out cannons. God, that that just makes the figure. That's the best part. So much better than the uh, hammer, sword, rifle thing. Yeah. Um, and the head sculpt on this is so much better too. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, I I, I really I really enjoy he this toy. I got like he, he doesn't look like he's taking a shit. Uh, I remember I um I felt really bad because I got an RID cliff jumper and I choose not to really mod toys unless I have a factory version because you know I like to have that factory version to play with or do whatever I want with. And the custom kind of serves its purpose as a, I worked on this and I put my work into this. Um, and for now, with money, I was like, okay, I'm not going to customize really because I don't have fallback money if I mess up. Mm-hmm. But Cliff Jumper's head on the original, or on, well, this is the original technically, but on the mainline version bothered me so much that I took some epoxy sculpt and filled his mouth <laughs> with it and just kind of carved a little <laughs> smile in it. But. The epoxy was old, so I tried to redo it, and it kind of just fucked up the face. <laughs> so I need to get I need to I need to get some paint and fix that. Um, you might as well just give up. Well, I got a second one, so I really don't care that much mm. now. But yeah, oh yeah. I got a second one because Toy was fucked up, stupid assholes. We still don't like you. Um. But yeah, and I did what you would hate. Oh, if you saw my room, you'd come in here and just fucking destroy everything, and you saw it too. Where I merged my shelves. Um, for Cybertron with Prime. Cybertron with Prime? Or for Cybertron. Oh, I thought you... Well, no, I'm not against that. I'm probably, I'm going to be doing the same thing when uh, the Fall of Cybertron toys come out. Okay, like, well, because like, like gonna... I know you're, uh, you're an advocate for... No, they're not in canon. No, no, no. Well... Need more lemon plates. They're, they're not, though. They're, they're really not, but... I don't know. It, well, here's the it, funny it, thing is when you look at um, Megatron and you're like, okay, I can see that. Um, and then you look at Soundwave and then you're like, what the fuck? But then in the new or uh, the the first War for Cyber or Fall of Cybertron trailer, you see him get his fucking blo- body blown out of his ass. So you're like, oh, okay. And then you see Starscream. Okay, maybe. Just colors. But then you look at Optimus Prime's models and Bumblebee's and you're like, what the fuck happened? How the hell does this I get mean, turned? They're, they're not the same continuity, but they have the same. The the reason they kind of like fuck themselves in the explanation, saying that War for Cybertron was a prequel to uh, Prime, but what what they actually ended up saying or meaning was like they're part of the same family, the aligned uh, canon, like where every character pretty much has the same backstory, same. Yeah. Uh, just everything's the same, but they just uh, have their own versions of the same story. So Prime is its own universe. The games are their own universe, but they all ha- are in the same kind of uh, uh, family where they're, the characters are pretty much all exactly the same and have the same origin. It's like it's like the movies with the comic books. I guess so. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, they don't count that. them as canon, but they but they branch from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm just, I'm just eager for the day where they finally make the game or the special movie or, um, book. I think being a book would be pretty lame, but where they pretty much they merge into, uh, you know, like I know that I'm definitely will be, uh, displaying the fall of Cybertron. Combaticons and Shockwave with my Prime Decepticons. Well, the reason I did this is because this really sucks because let me count real quick. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, 10 or 11 just Prime Autobots. And this, this includes doubles, but still. And three Prime Decepticons. Mm-hmm. And then I put my, um, I was like, okay, let me kind of beefing this up. But then my War for Cybertron toys go three to two. So, but then Fall of Cybertron will come out and we're getting Starscream and the five Combaticons. And then with Prime, we're getting, uh, I'm getting at least two Viacons and uh, Breakdown, Knockout. So the cool thing is though, Autobots, for what we've seen from Prime at least, are done. So only Decepticons can happen now, but still, I hate having that huge of a deficit. Like yeah, I, I'm, I guess you're. I, well, I, I'm as considering far as, uh, not, that's been shown. Well, Ironhide's not out. Well, yeah, but I'm talking about like in the show. Ironhide's going to be in the show, isn't he? 
I think I don't fucking know. And then we're getting Rumble. I'm getting Rumble just because two reasons. He's a prime Decepticon and he's blue and his name's Rumble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, um, I'm pr- pretty sure that they said that Ironhide was actually going to be in the show. They never said it was going to be Ironhide, but apparently there is a casted Autobot who's going to be in the show, but we don't know who that is, so fuck. So, but I'd like it to be Ironhide. Ironhide has like two toys already and a mm-hmm. repaint, and yeah, so I don't know why not Ironhide. Um, I d- I did actually pre-order the deluxe um wave three, I guess. I I, I of, I of Knockout, Viacon, and Hotshot. From what site? BBTS. I just, I can't do it for that. Fifty something dollars. Well, fifty four ninety nine, and I did the math. Split it between three figures. It's roughly eighteen dollars per deluxe, which <sighs> it's not horrible. It's, it's not, not good it's, at all. It's not ideal, no. But I mean, I mean, with ve- with the Vehicon going to be so short packed and going to be scalped out the asshole. And no one will listen to me on the boards. Not a single fucking person. Like, I've had people kind of uh, symbolize with me and say, okay, I'm only going to get a couple of these. But not a single person has agreed with me with the uh, statement of, hey, guys, let's, the first day, let's not buy all the Viacons. <laughs> this way, uh, this will this will allow for the scalper value to go down. They will not be scalped that much. And I'm sure he's going to be repacked. I'm positive he is. So how about we just kind of chill out? We don't have to buy every single Viacon that we can get our hands on. This will make him cheaper. This will make him in less demand, make him easier to come by. But nope, everyone's like, I need at least 10. (laughs) I I need need at least, at least 6. And... so I'm probably going to have to end up doing this. I just want the case to go down a little bit. I just wish I had a really hard time going in with that pre-order because Knock, or, uh, hot shot. You can give me hush. <laughs> I mean, it's such a s- stupid figure. I hate that mold. And now it's and it's it's not even going to be a show character. If it was at least someone else in the show, then I would have an easier time. But, I don't mind it that much. My problem is having this many uh, Prime Autobots. This sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess um, might as well go into the first story, which I kind of uh, tried to go into already. The, but the mainline Prime figures were released in Japan, I guess, today or yesterday. I don't know. So, like within the past day or so. Recently, since and, last Primecast. And I, it's very interesting. I had no idea that the <laughs> that they used that many stickers. I yeah. thought it was like going to be real small things that weren't on the uh, U.S. versions, such as the like little heart rate monitors on Ratchet or the Autobot symbols on Rat, uh, well, on Ratchet too. Um, but if you look at the bare naked. Uh, ratchet with no stickers. He's pure white, except for his head crest. He is completely white, and it's really weird looking. Bumblebee is he's molded in yellow, so it's not that weird. But with how much how many stripes he has, he is you cover him in stickers. Mm-hmm. Horrible. It's so weird, and all the deluxes are packed in like in the cardboard box inside the bigger box, which is really weird. But yeah, yeah. and. You had to put together the mini cons, which is what? cool, but I mean, but they're not really resembling action figures at this point. It's almost like a model kit with very actual, not a whole lot of modeling to do. You know what really threw me off more than anything is Japan went the really gimmicky route, and uh, that Bumblebee, he has a sticker that you put on the windshield, and it just says Bumblebee in capital letters. Does it really? Yeah, I can. Where's it at? I uh, I did not see that. It's not on that news story, but I think it's on. I think it's it's on Sabertron. I don't see. I don't see it on the sticker sheet. I'll find it for you. I saw it today, so I'm sure I can find it. It's just a matter of time. 
Um, dur, dur, dur. Oh, I think I found it. Yeah, I th right here. Um, let me make sure. Well, anyway, in the meantime, the, they actually had an interview with one of the designers of the mm -hmm. Prime Toys for the, the uh, Takara release. And the reason they said they gave, which uh, I really, I, I mean, it's weird as hell that there's such a huge difference. But the reason why they went this route is that they actually like had a test market. Mm -hmm. And they said that the, uh, that they, that kid, Japanese kids really seem to play with the mini cons more than anything and like to combine them. And, hmm. uh, and so that's the reason why that they actually are including these with the, with the prime toys. And in the TV show, they're actually going to have a flash animation short at the end of every episode, trying to like connect the, the arms of microns to the prime storyline. Yeah, apparently what they said too was um, the Microns are Energon-infused things on Earth. And the uh, Autobots don't know that their weapons are Microns in the show. But the problem is, there's two things wrong with this. Their weapons don't resemble Microns, and their weapons in the show are built into their bodies. Mm -hmm. So, that's kind of funny, but... Yeah. That, that I, I'm looking at that picture. I have n no idea where they got that sticker from because it's not on the actual sticker sheet that comes with him. Yeah. And it's not on any of the other pictures. That's weird. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is a very interesting route that they did because it actually gives collectors a reason to get the Japanese versions of toys that they already have because they're so different. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, um, actually, you know what? I was wrong. Mm. It is on the sticker sheet, oh. but it's not supposed to go on the windshield apparently. Because uh, on the on this other website, it actually has it on the rear bumper. Wait, that's a different sticker. Yeah, that's a gold sticker with black letters. This is weird. <laughs> I don't know what to think about this. The one sticker on Bumblebee I like is the Autobot symbol in the chest that looks embossed. That looks cool. Mm-hmm. Well, but. I don't... I, I, I'm not... Just the, the, the how, with how many Micron ports that they add to the yeah. deluxes, they look so weird. I, like, especially on Soundwave, it really messes up the look. Well, Soundwave's Micron, though, looks really cool. Uh, it's Ravage, right? No, uh, Terracon Cliff Jumpers is Ravage. His is some sort of Scorponok, oh, yeah, Scorpion yeah, yeah. Claw yeah, gun thing. Mm. Yeah, that is pretty neat. But um, I did have a pre-order for that one, but I canceled Sound it. Wave? But I yeah, I did, but I canceled it because I found the one uh, last week in mm. store. But I don't know. I want to get one or two of the Japanese versions. I just don't know which ones yet. Uh, on, I think on it'd be, one uh, hand, I, on one hand, I want to get the uh, Optimus Prime because it doesn't have the stupid weapons, but it's also fifty four dollars. That's ten dollars more expensive than a leader class version, while I could get it for nineteen dollars in the U U.S. So I mean, it's markup. It's to be expected, but and the paint job is a little bit better. Yeah, um, the the legs is mainly where it, mm. it looks better. It kind of holds it all together than this kind of really overexposed red and blue. Um, me and you were talking before the show. Uh, getting Megatron would be kind of cool. Yeah, since I don't have a version of that mold. Yeah, what I was thinking too was um, something that I don't know. Like getting Megatron would be cool, but then I'd feel weird because I don't have the Deluxe Optimus Prime. Well, then I'd want the San Diego one that's, I think, still in stock on Hasbro Toy Shop. But then I don't have the kids. And, I don't know. If anyone has the kids, I kind of want the kids from the first edition, first I, edition two-pack. I have no interest in getting those. I just want them for display pieces. Well, that's all they're good for, but I think they'd just be cool to have. But I'm not going to spend $30 on them. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, speaking of uh, of this release, did you see the inbox pictures of the Easy Legends? Uh, yeah. 
They just look. Oh Jesus! Duh. What? That's weird. Knockoffs. <laughs> they look like knockoffs. Yes, they do. They look extremely. Look at that bumblebee and tell me it's Sorry, legitimate. Where is it at? There it is. <laughs> eh, bumblebee and ratchet. Like these look like because of the the deficit and the size of the picture, you can't tell how big they are. Mm -hmm. These kind of look like deluxes. Yeah, so they do. But just super generic pictures that could have been photoshopped. But yeah. This is the these are the uh if they didn't have the Takara Tomi logo at the top, they would look like pure knockoffs. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't think the real um like once again deficit is really the true term for what they're doing with Arms Micron. It's no, that comes from the legends because how these are packaged looks awful. Mm -hmm. But some of these arms microns actually actually do look kind of cool. I that that is the biggest appeal in them, I think. What the arms micron? Uh huh. I mean, are you gonna it, get ratchet? <sighs> <sighs> no. Good. Even even because of the heart ray miner stickers, no. I, mean, I think repro labels will make something for that. Yeah, I'm gonna hold out see if they do anything like with that. But no. I would, I would only like the number one I might get would be Megatron. That and is the most tempting one I want to get. And, and then maybe Skywarp. Yeah, for I was Prime about the same, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but then again, I'd want Thundercracker, and I'm not that guy who's all. I need every seeker. I, I don't like buying the same mold hundreds of times, but. We, the, the, uh, the the Decepticon army needs to be a little bit bigger on our shelves. Yeah, I mean, the Hasbro. Yeah, it's pretty Apparently sad. Hasbro, Hasbro's um, uh, justification for this is Decepticons, well. yeah, they don't sell well. Kids don't want the bad guys. Because you don't sell them. Because <laughs> the kids have to fight with a 30-year-old grown man in the toy aisle to get a Viacon. Like I guarantee you, it'll be before Christmas that any kid gets a Viacon. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I once don't... again, it, it's good to have a guy at Toys R Us. Yeah, like I said, in the... yeah, and I'm, I'm, you're gonna have to try to hook me up with one too. I'll try. The really upsetting thing is though, he's he's going through some real personal stuff with his mom. Uh, she was some sort of kidney disease. And um, she's uh, he, uh, they took her off dialysis, so um, his mom is uh, soon to pass. So that's okay. it's really upsetting. So I can't really put in a call and be like, "Hey, bro, I, I know your mom is all." Yeah. So that's that's really yeah, it's inappropriate timing there. Oh yeah, I I would never think of that. But yeah, I feel really bad for him. He's he's a super nice guy. Once again, Tom, I think he's listened to the show once. Um, so if he's still listening, hello, Tom. Um, but yeah, so it's real nice guy. Real, really sucks that you're going through that, but anyway, change, uh, change uh, the, one, uh, that's bringing, one, that's bringing down the show. I can't uh, back to really? these, yeah, back to these prime toys. I cannot stop watching that commercial. That's Which one? the, my, that, re that really elaborate one. Arms apple. Oh, the, the six uh, minute one. The six minute one. I really like that thirty second one. I don't. Really, I you don't, don't like the stop motion? That looks beautiful. No, I I like seeing the the little Japanese people's hands like moving the figure. <laughs> that was so <laughs> racist. That was Jesus H Christ. <laughs> I like seeing the little Japanese people's that, hands. That was not meant to be racist. That it was, was racist and some sort of fetish mix in there. <laughs> Jesus. But anyway, I I. It, and, he, and hearing the corny transformation sound while you're watching the guy play with the toy. And you see the guy kind of struggle with it and they add in another transformation sound just to make it sound better. But yeah, I like, I, I like, um, well, I have it, I, I have Apple TV and I can watch it on my big 50 inch plasma. Are you serious? Yes. You, you put that much effort into. <laughs> well, it's right there. Yeah, my computer's downstairs. And I'm in the living room. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Well, um, speaking of Arms Micron and Viacon, 
We got new pictures of Knockout, Viacon, and Hotshot. I'm ha- I'm going to get Knockout regardless. Yeah, but Knockout. I'm, I'm having a really hard time trying to just like the look of that figure. Who? Uh, knockout. I. The the weird thing is, I think we've had two. Um, sorry. Excuse me. Uh, two cases of in hand play, but he does not look properly displayed. Um, mm-hmm. I want to show you this picture right here. I think you should be able to see this picture, and if not, it's the last picture in this thread. Um, but you see, it's in the Arms Micron. Um, you see, Star First Edition Starscream. Uh, then you have Soundwave, Deluxe Megatron, Skywarp, and Knockout. And Knockout has his shoulder headlights pointed up, and it really makes the figure look better. But it's just the flatness of the chest. That middle panel really makes it look like it can do it more. Is, it's the whole chest that really ruins the look of the figure. While in the show, his chest looks completely different and really adds to the unique style that he has. Though that uh, middle panel, it looks like it doesn't look like a crease. It looks like a panel line. So it looks like you can just lift that panel up and overlap it, but no one's done it. <sighs> so I don't know if it re- can really do that, and or maybe there's just a little mod you have to do to make it do it but, I don't know. but i'll it, still get knockout he looks decent it's just weird to look at the show model and yeah look it, at th- it could have been so much better with a very popular new character they could have done better yeah even the people who work on prime were incredibly surprised of how much people like him mm-hmm. knockout is a it's really like it has to do a lot with the voice actor too it, the how he delivers his lines is great mm-hmm. like the one reason when people ask questions along the lines of what characters do you want to see in Prime, and when people say Lockdown, I have to disagree. I don't think we need a Lockdown. I think Knockout is the most interesting Decepticon on Prime. I think he has the most attitude, most personality, and I think he's probably my favorite Decepticon next to Megatron. The only reason Megatron is so high up is because he's fucking scary. Yeah. Like that um, in uh, Rock Bottom when Jack just drills through the rock and you just see Megatron's face and he's daring Jack to kill him. That's fucking terrifying. Um, I think that might have been one of the episodes I didn't see. The one where they're trapped uh, under a bunch of rock? No, I didn't see that one. Really? Well, pretty much what happened. There's like three or four episodes in a row that I had no interest in seeing. Well, this is a filler or filler esque episode, but pretty much what happens is um, they get trapped under a bunch of rock. Starscream, or well, no, Starscream gets out, but Megatron, uh, Jack with um, a Decepticon driller machine thing, and uh, Bulkhead and Miko are trapped in this cove and uh, under a bunch of rock because this mine collapsed. And Jack w- figures out how to work at this Cybertronian driller. Uh, machine and he's drilling through rock and out of nowhere he hits Megatron and it just zooms out or zooms in and Megatron's face is just buried beneath rock and he's like I guess helping the uh, the lesser fortunate is out of the question huh and then uh, Megatron just has that awful voice just like come on do it don't you love the glory amongst the Autobots that that pleasure of destroying the the other factions leader come on do it and then uh and then uh, megatron's like optimus would do it and jack's like no he wouldn't and jack kind of rolls away and megatron is just still spouting off like i'll be i'll be real happy to tell megatron or tell optimus about this conversation when i'm ripping out his spark like it's, it's fucking crazy how how crazy he is i might have to watch that episode now just for, just for Megatron's delivery in that episode, it's awesome. And then, the, yeah, in that episode, actually, Megatron, Starscream takes Megatron down there to an Energon mine to where Megatron pretty much, just out of nowhere to get sick of Starscream, gets him on his knees and is holding his cannon to his face, about to kill him. And if the cove hadn't collapsed, Megatron would have killed him. So, pretty intense. Um, Speaking about... Well, was on the same topic as a uh, prime, the prime show, and the Japanese version. Uh, they got the full uh, theme song. Yep, I I dig it. It, it 
a lot of people are down on it, but I like it for what it is. I mean, Japanese Transformers shows always have kind of really popish J-pop uh, songs in the intros. Yeah, I, I don't mind. And I really, really love the intro for Galaxy Force. Mm-hmm. It gets me fucking amped. But and don't start the, your day without that theme song. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen it before? Um, a long time ago. I haven't seen it recently. Oh. I can't freaking recite the lyrics like I can at Transformers Evo, but but uh, that's like a song. It. That's Transformers Evo, the opening for Transformers Animated. That song I literally hear every single day, or I... at least every single weekday I go to school because it's on my MP3 player, and I have like 60 songs on it because I'm too lazy to download more, and that song gets played at least once a day. I don't think I've I've heard that before. Are you kidding? It sounds great. Um, it sounds really good. Um, but yeah, the, this thing they I don't mind it. This this theme song really because it has that kind of rap bit in it, yeah. a rapish bit. It reminds me of like the opening, like the second opening for Bleach, um, and like the first opening for Naruto Shippuden. So it this isn't a foreign genre of music. This is just foreign to other people who haven't explored other. Uh, Japanese media like this or mm. or anime and so to me and you Jesse this really isn't anything new no so so we're, this is we're new to a completely new generation that that the movies and prime yeah. have brought in yeah this, I, I don't mind it I actually kind of like it I don't see myself downloading this anytime soon but I I can really see a fun commercial or opening coming out of it because it's just so oh, excuse me it's so poppy and it I don't know I think it adds a new feeling to Prime. So just kind of like, hey, guys, it's okay, because in the end, this is a cartoon. So, The um, topic switch, more official images of the Japanese Terracon cliff jumper have, <laughs> have come out. And going from uh, red with little bits of dark energy on to solid purple, and now it's translucent purple. What the fuck? That's weird. I don't know. I don't really care, because I don't think I'm getting it now. I'm but. not. Because I'm not getting it just because the one, the first edition I have is good enough. Though it would be cool if that that and Megatron and Skywarp would be cool arms microns to things to own. Mm-hmm. But, um... It's... I, they... they if I get it, arms it, microns, those will be the three I get, for sure. But. It's just so different from what we saw at a toy fair and botcon last year like i don't know it, it is weird and maybe it is cool but i don't know i think what really gets me more than the translucent purple and i think what would really draw it in better is you know like the uh on first edition cliff jumper his hands and his neck and his stomach joint and that's all solid black right uh yeah all his joints plastic well, the the ones on this Terracon one are like purple, brownish, reddish, like, like puke colored, <laughs> and uh, it looked bad. It looked really bad. That ruins it, and because it's translucent purple and a light purple at that, it makes it just look really gross and not really photogenic or even does it, does it make you more sick than looking at your current one? I'm playing with my current one. I'm, I'm playing with the current one now to get because I don't want this figure to remind me of. Of dry heaves and stomach flu when I play with it because it's a really good toy. Oh, I also, fuck, that was an asshole move. I didn't mention the source of where I got this first edition cliff jumper from. I got him in a trade from Might Mouse 74, so uh, I don't think he listens to this, but thanks to Might Mouse 74 for this cliff jumper. He hooked me up. But, yeah, now that, it's awkward. That's a, that's a second person that's hooked you up. And you, and you gave him something the fuck you surprised me out of nowhere the, i went up to this guy because I, I know he lived in canada i did and I was not like, you out of nowhere you were waiting for it for a long time no no no. one day you were like hey bro i might get you a prime and then i was looking at more primes and you were like hey i got you a prime i'm like oh well, okay i wasn't like where's my prime yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were. You're like, where's the tracking number, Jesse? Jesse, I, I, lo I lost the tracking it. number. Give I it to me again, Jesse. Jesse, I'll get you, I'll get you yeah, why haven't you given me a tracking number yet? 
to a third wheel jack. <laughs> I don't need a third wheel jack. Fine, I'll see about I'll see what I can do for Viacons. How's that? Deal. Alright. Um but uh speaking of wheel jack. Uh, oh, ah, yeah. ah, ah, Dr. Wu. Uh, yeah, Dr. Wu, Wu's releasing. Hey, Dr. Wu. Dr. Wu. We need to make a third party company and name it Dr. Wu. Uh, they're releasing a upgrade, I guess, set for Wheeljack where it's just a, a replacement head that doesn't have the faceplate. Oh, looks and it comes really with a grenade. Cool. Does? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, lo- that looks really cool. Now... I, I guess cool. I'm, I'm going. I guess I'm going to be kind of a roll on a roll here because I want to get that. You you get you're gonna get that. Uh huh. Sure. So I know am. you're a proponent for you wanted Wheeljack to have a, a face mm-hmm. as a toy. I don't know. I'm just. I think he looks really. He has a lot more character when you see him kind of having like the wrinkles on his face. You can see that he's more of a war veteran. I like it too. It's just a matter of like. It goes back to what I was talking to my friend Alex about earlier, where um, the thing about collecting, which was fun a couple years ago, and I really thought about it more today because I was talking about getting animated Ultra Magnus and how I got him in like January of 09. He was never a priority. Uh, Figures used to be more of, do I need this or not? And recently, because of the demand for the figures and short packedness, it's all a matter of... um, I need to get this, and I'll think about it later if I need this. So collecting has really been – needs to be put in perspective for me because I can't afford to spend all this money on stuff I really don't need. And that was really shown with Prime, getting all these R.I.D. versions of characters I already had. And yeah. then uh, Dark of the Moon, which I got a lot more stuff than I really would have liked to. I don't regret getting it because each mold kind of offers something cool. But I could have lived without it, and I haven't really had to deal with that choice that I've had for a while. And I kind of miss that. It was fun buying toys, you know, under that mentality of, well, I only have this much allowance this week. I'll get this one next week. So I haven't had that for a while. But with toys that I I don't have at my, you know, at my store now, I'm really doing that with because I've been on Crave.com looking for animated leader bulkhead, looking for animated blackout. And looking at this Prime stuff and upgrade sets, like, this is really cool, and I really want this, but do I need it, and will I really use it, or am I buying it just to have it? Right. And that's where this thing get, falls into place, where I don't need it, it'll sit on a shelf, I'll probably end up taking this off and putting the factory one back on, because it'll just bug me, and that'll be the end of it, and that'll be $20 down the drain. What does this have to do with the Dr. Wu wheeljack head? Because I, I, it, it's just I don't need third party shit or any, anything really. The problem with it is it's part swapping, so I'm gonna need to keep the his head around, and then with me being like, okay, if I'm gonna customize something and have a factory, it's gonna bug me hell of a lot to have this really weird faceless or uh, face having wheeljack on my shelf. So I, with, I just with them making this wheeljack head, I. I hope that they make a replacement head for first edition Optimus without the face mask. I think that would be really cool. Oh, speaking of that, this was something that I did not think I don't need it. Uh, I was on Shapeway's website earlier, and they have an upgrade set for first edition Optimus. And they have uh, the one that I saw, which was really cool, and it's like $19 unpainted. Um, He comes with new smokestacks. And they're like uh, harder plastic. And he comes with two swords. And the swords are really detailed and they can like rotate. So you can put them the right way while having the guard over the hand. Mm-hmm. And that looked really cool. I was thinking about getting that. No replacement head. No, but uh, Shapeways doesn't really do replacement heads because they're more of a casting thing or more of a. Uh, that you have to pretty much, if you get like hands from them, you have to put them together. Oh. So they're more of a. Um, a parts kit more than a a third party kit but i i don't know now i can see someone doing something with optimus head soon the problem is though i think with i think if someone came out with a head that was made for first edition people would get mad that it was that it's not for 
the main line because that's what people have to get. And then if someone made one for the main line, the few of us who got for, uh, first edition. Maybe we'll be they'll upset. have both in a set to make everyone happy. Like two heads. One for one and then one for the other. Well, Voyager Optimus Prime did get seen. Then he then, in the then... instruction sheet they have a, fa- a face maskless Optimus Prime at the end. Wait, on the Prime? Yeah. Instruction sheet. Yeah. I'm gonna go check. Hold on a second. Distract him. Distract. Distract him. Me. Um. So I don't. I'm not wearing pants. I'm in the middle of doing laundry. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, I returned. Okay. All right, let's see this. Was it this one? I hope so. That'd be pretty cool. Can't fucking tell. Is there a close-up of his head? There should be. Let me see if I can find the picture. I, oh, I... no, now I see it. I can see his mouth engraved right here. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I already knew, but I didn't know this was on the instruction sheet in my hand. But, yeah, we'll see this. I think it'd be cool if they just released this mold and gave him a Decepticon logo and called him a Ryan Pax. Yeah. I think that'd sell pretty well. But yeah, that's what I kind of wanted. That's what kind of makes me feel better. I would probably just get that for the faceplate and then have an Orion Pax and an Optimus Prime. Optimus. I can't find the picture I had. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, there, there, there it is. I, uh, I could just wait and get that version. If they make it. If it even gets released. <laughs> yeah. Next story. What is it? Uh, um, we masterpiece Starscream pictures. That's not what you listed. Uh, that's the very first story listed. Oh, shit! Oh, you were not. Go- you said the first story. I mean, it wasn't the first story, so you fuck it up, sir. You fucked it up. You fucked everything and gave it herpes so we got new pictures of mp11 starscream and he's the same fucking thing as the original except the hip the hip pieces are now on his legs that's it yep but he's the same size which i don't care about but actually i fuck i like this i like this a lot they i guess they uh what, what all do they do for one his color scheme looks a lot better than the united states version his color scheme perception. looks more like the G1 toy. Which looks really good. Yep, especially that gray. Like, the bottom of the jet looks really good. Yeah. Um, no I'm, robot I'm, jump. I'm, I plan on getting it eventually. Um, I'll get it when it comes to the, to the U.S. I don't care for the coronation stuff. I don't need that. Um, I do. I like it. I like it. I just, I just don't care enough for it. To pay the $200 price tag compared to the $60 it's not price tag. It's about 130 Okay, that's pretty good, but still. Yeah. Um, Dreadwing. Well, one second. I'm, I'm still looking Dreadwing. up stuff. Starscream. Star- yeah. Um, one thing I really like about Starscream. Do you you have the original Starscream, don't you? Yeah. Uh, the head sculpt on this one looks really fucking good. Is it better? Oh yeah. It's it's different. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's I. That was one thing that really peeved me with the original. With the original, I have to uh, look th- at this now. Hold on. I have it open if you want me to link you. Why haven't you already done it? Because I thought you had Do your it. shit covered. Oh, never mind. I found it. Okay. See, I had faith in you. Oh, you yeah. Re- it is. Yeah. Does, does the head still spin around? Uh, I don't know if you saw the faces, but honestly, I don't care. Hmm. I'll be a son of a bitch. Yeah, he he um he looks a lot uh better than the original. I and mean, I, I like that. Um I don't mind the fact that he's the same size and I guess his stability people are mad that he doesn't come with a stand and I don't care if he can stand up on his own, which I can hear he has I hear he has really, really good stability. 
Yeah, he can Which, stand up by his himself just fine. Yeah, like the original Star Scream really couldn't. Um, so mm. his crown is a nice gold chrome. Yeah, and his, instead of coming with Dark Doctor Archieville, he comes with just a generic hologram pilot, which is cool. But yeah, MP11 looks cool, and I'll get it when it comes to the states. Yep. Next, Dreadwing. Yeah, apparently Dreadwing is going to be coming out before uh, Skyquake now because he's going to be in Wave Three of the Voyagers. Yep. And did they say he's going to be short packed as well? He probably is. I don't know. I don't. I don't fucking care anymore. But there, there are no actual pictures have been shown of Dreadwing, but the uh, Skyquake version comes with a sword. Instead mm-hmm. of that Gatling gun that he had in the show, it'd be really cool if the Dreadwing came with a Gatling gun. Yeah, I. They might do something like that, but someone made a really good point uh, that they think that Dreadwing was supposed to come first in the Prime story, uh, but they really couldn't fit it in, so they did the whole Skyquake thing to kind of ease way for Dreadwing later because there's like a track number four on the Prime Season 1 soundtrack is named Dreadwing, and uh, no one really did anything with Skyquake, and then Dreadwing came around and everyone's freaking out with a toy and everything, so... I hope we still get a Skyquake toy. If we don't, I'll be really upset. That's really, really missed potential for Prime Decepticons. Yeah. But if, I'm, if, I'm glad that Dreadwing is actually going to be sticking around as a main character now. Yeah, if he would have, if he, well, I guess we'll get into this later, but if he would have been offed in that recent episode where he appeared, I would have been really upset. Right. But he's he's sticking around. I like it. Really cool character, too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, li- I like Dreadwing, and I'm glad we're going to get a toy of him. I hope it doesn't suck. Um, I, guess I, I wonder if we're gonna have to watch him out, like a, uh, like what's his face? Breakdown. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I guess we can talk about loose cannons now. We're gonna review loose cannons, okay? Yeah, that's all the that's all that's really left in this list. Yep. Um, so in this episode of loose cannons. Wheeljack came back after Woo! after pursuing Dreadwing, and both of them are sticking around. Um, I'm glad Wheeljack is, especially. I thought he was just going to be be there for for this, just this one episode. Well, it turns out actually, or it doesn't really turn out, but what it seems like, because he said he's going to do some exploring on Earth, and then it showed him drive away with a car mode. So, I think Dread or um, Wheeljack is on Earth, but he's not with the team. No, he's not. Yeah. Well, at least he's on Earth. Yeah, that's really cool. They can phone him in whenever, and he'll just—he'll probably just poke up again in an episode and stay. Mm-hmm. And the, what I guess it was in Botcon last year that they said that they're going to have a major character death in the middle of season two. And apparently, I don't remember lot, that. A lot of people said thought that Bulkhead was going to die in this episode. That okay? This is something that happened on. I don't, did I talk about this last week? Talk about what? Where I freaked out uh, from Twitter. Uh, I think so. Yeah, but you didn't specify. Yeah, well, yeah, because we didn't review the episode. But pretty much in this episode, what happens is uh, after uh, Wheeljack, or yeah, Wheeljack follows Dreadwing crashing on Earth in this episode, and to which D- Dreadwing sets up a trap for bulkhead and wheeljack to where he dreadwing's thing is kind of like bombs so he wires a bomb to bulkhead and we saw this from the from the preview and someone put on twitter and someone retweeted um they said retweet if you cried when bulkhead died and i froze and i freaked the fuck out and i i went downstairs and my dad you know watching this march madness basketball crap and I'm like, how much longer? And he's like, three minutes left on the clock. And three minutes left on the clock in basketball is like 20 minutes in real time. So I kind of had to eagerly wait, and I watched the episode. And luckily, Bulkhead didn't die, but don't fucking do that. You don't do that shit. That's, that's bro code. You, it specifically states you just don't do that shit. Another uh, bro code is that you never 
bring your head down while eating a corn dog. You always bring the corn dog to your head, mouth. Got really fucking weird again. <laughs> but you don't do that either. Same but you thing definitely, with the in a show where someone says, or the creators say, hey, guess what? Just because their name is Optimus Prime or Bumblebee does not mean that we will not kill them. If we feel that their death is necessary, we are not afraid to kill anyone, even humans. So if someone dies, they're dead if, and they're going to stay dead. If any human would have to die, I would say Miko has to die first. Well, the whole thing about Bulkhead, when I was thinking about it, I was like, well, here's the thing. Bulkhead's in the intro, and then Miko. So I think if they're going to kill, I think they're going to kill Ratchet. You think if, so? I, yeah, because Ratchet doesn't really, Ratchet has a lot of character, and I think he's he's in play for the most noble Autobot death. Even next to Optimus, because Optimus is about as fucking colorful as a pet rock, so. I'm sorry, Optimus has no fucking character. Horrible thing to say, but he doesn't. Orion Pax had more character. Yeah, rest in peace, Optimus Prime's character, November 2011 to March 2012. But yeah, I think I think if there is a major death in season two, it'll be Ratchet, and we're not confirming anything. Don't don't freak out saying we spoiled Prime for you. We're not. We're just speculating. No one knows who's gonna die if anyone dies. Speculation. Spurkerlate. Spurkerlate. Sparkle. Sparkle, sparkle, shine. Ratchet. But yeah, I think uh, maybe maybe Volkhead. Maybe. Nah, I think you're right. I think Ratchet would have to die. The, the problem with Ratchet, Ratchet... Ratchet must die. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's a campaign. <laughs> Kill Ratchet 2012. Dot <laughs> Well, like, I don't think they can kill RC. Uh, well, no, I think they could kill RC. But, I don't know. Bumblebee, no. Bulkhead, yeah. They, I don't think they'd kill Optimus. No. Last time they killed off Optimus and chose to keep him dead, Marvel lost the right to Transformers and they almost went bankrupt, so. Yeah. That didn't go well. That, that didn't go well. One thing you didn't put in our little spreadsheet is the, the one email we got. Yeah, I have it open right now. Um, But, yeah... Uh, Real quick to, to kind of tie up loose cans. I realized in these reviews, we don't really talk about anything. We kind of babble about shit. And we don't really talk about or review the episode at all. So? Well, one real, one thing I really liked in this episode was where um, it, it we find out that Dreadwing is Skyquake's twin. They shared They shared a spark, and Dreadwing could tell when he died. And come to find out that it's Bumble... He, Dreadwing finds out that Bumblebee and Optimus are the two that killed Skyquake. And he's like, all right, I'm going to go kill Optimus Prime. And Megatron is pretty much like, no, you you can't... One does not simply kill Optimus Prime. Like, I, I can't even do it. It's hard. And and then there, later on in the episode, Skyquake defies Megatron. And he's like, I had to. I'm sorry. I, I assure you I'll succeed. And Megatron's like, okay, this one time I'll allow it. And he gets off the phone with Dreadwing, and he kind of just looks over his shoulder to Soundwave and says, well, that's the last we'll be seeing of Skyquake, or uh, Dreadwing. Yeah, I thought so, that was really funny. Because it, it's true. Like, Dreadwing almost got killed, too. So, mm -hmm. like, and, I, and I'm glad that I, that just really, I really like that, because it showed that Megatron knows that Optimus Prime is a threat, and he's not just some, some guy that needs to die. He's someone who needs calculating and deals in more of, psychology than than even just brute strength and then I, I don't know i thought the episode was a little bit too lax actually to kill off a character like it would have been jumping the shark maybe yeah like i don't know bam bulkhead just explodes like what the fuck came out of nowhere yeah and then it, i have no no emotion and you know i agree but and we <laughs> And then at the end, uh, Skyquake kind of resumes his place under Megatron. Megatron's like, hey, don't defy me again. And Skyquake says, okay, sorry. And, uh, or, Skyquake. His name is fucking Dreadwing. But <laughs> Dreadwing, uh, that's confusing. They shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have done that at all. Way to fuck with everyone. But Dreadwing is main Decepticon cast, so. I like to see Decepticons. 
But that's. Do you have anything else that you liked from the episode? That Tony Todd voiced Dreadwing. Yeah, and he's a, re- a reoccurring character now, so it's not like a. Just a cameo. Yeah, where breakdown. Whenever he talks, they have to phone in uh, Adam Baldwin and. Who voices him? I think uh, Adam Baldwin. Uh, brother of Alec Baldwin. Yeah. Really? I think so. Hmm. I did not know that. Yeah, that's why he doesn't talk that much. <laughs> Whenever he does, he has several lines and not just one. But he's nowhere near Knockout. Knockout's paid by scale, which is mis- minimum wage in acting. Um, I'm going to I'm going to give you I'm going to give you a read over this question and uh, I want uh I want your opinion to know if we if we should read it over the air or not. Um. No. Shouldn't. No. I mean, I can basically sum that up in one answer, and that would be, and one would answer, and that would be no. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I, uh. It's a skip. It doesn't exist. Sorry, um, it, if, uh, real quick, as a, I think, is that it for everything we wanted to cover? I think so. So this is, this is Primecast episode 13? Um, I did drive by a movie theater last Friday and, and saw a huge S line. And for the Hunger Games? Yeah. Did this, you see the movie? No. Not even going to think about seeing it. It's not even uh, be, just a bunch of girls get their fucking panties in a twi- twist because it's about a female hero character and it's written by a female, so it might as well be on the fucking Lifetime channel. Jesus, and you you offended Japanese people and women. My wife loves Lifetime movies and it's stupid. Every fucking Lifetime movie is about. Women are so right and just as a man with their evil penises of death. I did. Uh, did I heard someone make a uh, uh, a joke about the Hunger Games and that they want to make a sequel or either a sequel or a parody, and <laughs> and it's it's it will be called the uh, Hungry Hungry Hippo Games. <laughs> 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 And uh, I don't know, it's so fucking immature, but it's so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the Hunger Games is so fucking unoriginal. It's about a feature where people are basically fight to the death for entertainment. It's not original at all. One thing I saw pretty funny is there's these memes where pretty much it's like, uh, I don't know, but it's pretty funny. But the the trailer where the uh, the little girl, her little sister... And she's like, don't worry, you're a first year, so your name's only in there once. They won't pick you. And they ended up picking her. And it's a picture of her, and it says, it's your first year, they said. They won't pick you, they said. And it's really funny and evil. But, yeah, I don't know. Hunger Games, It. I had the option to read the book a couple school years ago. And I read the synopsis of it, and it seemed pretty cool. I just never got around to reading it. I, just, I don't dislike it, because I never read it. But... I don't know. No one. Hunger Games was always that cool book that people talked about, but it really didn't get this much attention until it was a movie. So, what really confuses me about it is that it's aimed at the teenager audience, especially for girls. But I've I've listened to grown ass adult men reading this book and saying how awesome it is. That just confuses me. Okay, I I don't want to. It's uh, aimed at at teenagers. Especially girls. And it's I really... very PG. There's a movie that came out that has pretty much the exact same premise as The Hunger Games, where it's about uh, kids fighting to the death for entertainment. And it's called Battle Royale. And it's super fucking violent and very R rated. And that's the version of that I I would have liked to have seen this be, but still, it's not if it's not fucking original. I don't care what people say. Oh, it's so good. 
um, it's been done forever. Uh, basically, any Roman movie that focused on gladiators. I mean, gladiators fought to the death for entertainment. Uh, the Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, prisoners fought to the death for entertainment in the future. Uh, Death Race, uh, the Jason Statham movie. Uh, people uh, used cars to fight to the death for entertainment. It's not a new concept. And it's not very original at all. It's just, they just did a twist to having kids. But even that, that's not original because a, a more superior film came out around the same time. That's another thing. Have you seen trailers or TV spots for that fucking stupid ass movie called Lockout? Uh, no. Oh, this is awesome. The synopsis, this is the synopsis for the movie. Pretty much what's happened is this is the future. And in the future, we are going to take our bad guys and our prisoners and we're going to put them into space jail. It's this maximum <laughs> security federal prison in outer fucking space. And what the first trailer the it oh fucking horrible so what's <laughs> happened is on this space prison there's been a riot and the prisoners have taken over one i don't know what the fucking threat is on space prison why not just nuke the fucking place i'm pretty sure there's a switch somewhere on space prison where you can just blow that shit up or just or just with. have it or just have a door open and have everyone suffocate yeah fucking open that hatch and everyone's dead there you go and if they're that fucking bad, why didn't you just send them in the space without the prison and kill them? <laughs> well, in the prison, if we're going to send people into space, just fucking kill them. <laughs> what happened to the death penalty? And, well, apparently there's, like, the police, the prison guard or p prison warden's daughter is on that ship for some stupid fucking reason. It's probably some journalist writing a fucking story on space prison. Um... But anyway, they realize what's happened. Pretty much the prisoners break out. They've taken control of space prison. And I don't know how much of a threat that is. And they have to be stopped. And the only man to go in there, stop them, and save his daughter is in the trailer. They literally use the terminology, I know one guy, but he's a loose cannon. Uh. And, and he's just some badass. And in the TV spot, they tr they play the song, I'm a badass. If you play the song... Or own the song, I'm a badass. You're probably not a badass at all. Because that <laughs> this movie is so fucking stupid. And he's pretty much going through there, beating the shit out of people, killing them, trying to save this woman. And he's he's your cliche cop, like, oh, I guess we'll see if we survive. Wink, wink. Er, der, der, der. Your stupid fucking movie. And it looks horribly generic. You know they get home safe. Him and Him and the daughter get together. Happy ever after. Probably space prison blows up. Her dirt fucking stupid. Speaking oh. of badass, did you see the trailer for that movie called Badass? No. With uh, Dan one. with Danny Trejo, that Mexican. That's oh Danny Trejo. No, but Trejo. it sounds awesome. Okay, so it's so it's kind of based on real events. Kind of. Yeah, it's based off of a YouTube video oh, that yeah. got real popular. Oh, this guy called Epic Beard Man. Oh, have, yeah. Have you seen that? Oh, my God. This is the Epic Beard Man movie? Yeah. But oh. So in the in the video where I seen it, he's a white yeah. guy that's being harassed by a drunk black guy, and eventually mm -hmm. he just like kind of fucking clobbers the black guy, and he gets off the bus saying, he punched me first, he punched me first. Which he I, did. Yeah. and But in this movie, it's Danny Tre Trejo. I mean, wearing wearing the same shirt that says I'm a I'm a motherfucker, and he has a fanny pack and he has a beard. But in in the trailer, he's on the bus, but he's being harassed by uh, white no uh, neo Nazis, <laughs> and he beats the shit out of them, and he he kind of goes on his uh kind of uh kick kicking ass spree and just like beats up a whole lot of bad people. In Los Angeles, and they're like, I gotta find this right now. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds incredible. I had no idea what this movie was about. My dad told me about it a while ago. This is fucking awesome. And they say, like, this cop come, talks to this one guy. There's this guy that's going around. They call him badass. 
It's so <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie Machete? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I didn't. I saw the fake trailer. The fake trailer? Oh, man. That was with Grindhouse. See the real movie. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, oh, I think I found the trailer. Oh man. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you should you should see uh. You should see uh, what you call it uh, machete. It's it's hilarious. I was curious about it. He there's a part in the movie where he's in this hospital and this guy is is um attacking him, and he rips out his intestines, jumps out the window. And ropes down with them, and you know, it's pretty funny. And I'm watching this trailer, and it looks like a freaking YouTube movie. Oh my god, it has that, that Paul guy who plays Hellboy. Jesus Christ, they get everyone for this movie? <laughs> He's angry, he drives a bum. <laughs> He's all. Is this real? This can't be real. Yeah, it's real. Yeah, Ron Perlman. There was a big rumor that it was a fake trailer, but it's real. Is it going to be in theaters? Yeah. Called Badass. Dude, I'm going to go see that fucking movie. Me too. That looks awesome. Speaking about movie, uh, movies, I'm super, super pissed. Why? I just found, I went to Apple's website and go through trailers. First thing I saw, uh, I, I'm a Total Recall. Yeah, isn't that a remake? Yeah. I had no idea that this movie was being made with Colin fucking Farrell. Really? Yeah. That's weird. You didn't that you knew, did you know about it? I saw that they're remaking it, but that just sounds have really you, weird. Have you seen the original? A long, long time ago. I fucking love the original movie. And I I, I remember seeing seeing it uh when I was, I don't know, I guess I was seven or eight when it first came out. Yeah. And it was, it's, and it's a movie that still holds up. It didn't need to be fucking remade. It has a, a, uh, okay, so it's basically about this uh, uh, construction worker who. Who's a badass. Yeah. Who. Dan Trejo. No. Oh, uh, I don't like it. Told about this construction worker who finds this com- uh, commercial for something called Total Recall, where you can kind of have like a vacation in your mind, and you can basically have whatever happened to you. You can meet a girl, you can be a spy, you can basically, or you can do whatever. And he does it, but supposedly he wakes up from it, and it kind of like brings back old memories. Or a part of his life that was supposedly blocked off, um, where he was a spy, oh. and and uh, that he was on a secret mission, and part of his of the it, I can't remember. It's been a couple of years since I've seen it, but part of the problem was that his problem is that he doesn't know if he's in the program or not, or if oh. what he's happening is reality. Mm. So, and that's a that, and that's a kind of a conflict that goes and then they go to Mars because to because he goes he goes to Mars to find out why he, he had part of his life blocked out from him and the whole pro, the whole time in, uh people including his wife that is uh now uh revealed to have been fake just mm. try, trying to convince him that that he's actually in this program, but a lot of people, but he has doubts about it. And the ending of the movie leaves it so ambiguous whether or not he was actually in reality or not. So it's dun, kind dun, of, dun. so it's kind of left up to the viewer to decide. That those are remakes of movies that I don't like. Now with with like we talked about last week, these these cult movies, like horror movies of like an Nightmare on Elm Street and Texas Chainsaw, you can reimagine those. Because they they're those contemporary stories that you can play with, but movies like this don't don't remake well. This is like mm-hmm. remaking Footloose, like in modern day. It didn't fucking work. Right. This is this is like remaking. Uh, it doesn't need to be remade because if uh, the current audience can still get the same message. 
from yeah. it, even though it's not that it's not that old of a movie. And especially to- the original Total Recall had some of the best scenes in it. it had a chick with three boobs. Uh, it had this one mutant. Uh, mu- there's like this society on Mars that are just basically mutants. There, there's one guy that had like another guy coming out of his stomach that was like really fucked up looking. He was like the leader of the cult. Um, scene where like Arnold Schwarzenegger, there's no oxygen on Mars. Basically, they all live in this like kind of almost like a mouse maze of of building of cities where they had to be in this mm-hmm. section where there's oxygen and they are in Schwarzenegger and this one chick get thrown out of a building and their eyes are about to pop out of their sockets. Damn. Really cool. But it's a, it's made by the guy who made the first RoboCop. Yeah. Paul, Paul Verhoeven, I think his name is. They're also about to remake that. They were, but I think they scrapped that idea. No, but no, yeah. no. They, uh, they, they just got new stuff on. Apparently, he's gonna be more human than RoboCop, or <sighs> more, more Robo. And I don't know. I, I love the original RoboCop two. Not RoboCop two, but the the very oh, first yeah. one. Fuck great, RoboCop two. But... Great, great movie. Yeah, RoboCop two just kind of fucked up the whole idea. I mean, the very the the very first RoboCop. I mean, uh, Murphy's dead. And this cyborg has his memories, and the whole movie he's kind of trying to come to terms with that. And at the end, I mean, he's not Murphy, but he's kind of identifying himself. He, you see his whole tone changes. He refuses to wear the helmet at this point so he can see himself. And uh, at the very end, after he confronts the head of CCP about the corruption that's going on in the police, he says... Uh, what? By the way, what can I call you? He goes Murphy, and the movie ends while RoboCop Two starts, and he's back to his like, my name is RoboCop. I have Prime directives, but my name is Murphy. I'm confused. <laughs> so uh, that really just kind of fucked up the whole story. It's like it's like um, it's actually exactly like Transformers, where like at the end of the first one, it seemed uh, Mikhail and Sam had this stable relationship, and uh. And then Bumblebee could talk. In Transformers 2, it's like, oh, I don't like you, but I like you. Bumblebee still can't fucking talk. Uh-huh. And the end of the second one, it's like, oh, we're going to be in love forever. And then the third one, you get 10 seconds shot of this new girl's ass. So, I'm not complaining about that. I didn't say it was a bad thing. I just said it happened. Mm-hmm. You really, you should really watch the new, the original Total Recall soon because it's still such a great fucking movie. Yeah. If you get the DVD, also watch the commentary with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's it's hysterically bad. All really? Arnold Schwarzenegger talking about is like, oh yeah, this is the scene where where I I I take the thing out of my nose and now it's so gross, huh? That's all he does the entire commentary. That that's like listening to the commentary for the Chucky movies. It's hilarious because no one there gives a fuck and they're just. It's like us. We just spout off about stupid shit and not even really about anything that's going on on the screen. Nope. It's just people talking. <laughs> but so anyway, password. You come up with it, motherfucker. Uh, Do it. Um. Do it. Vomit. Vomit. See vomit. what if you listen to the whole episode? Type vomit. And it. You know what I've always wondered? I wonder if anyone is has ever guessed. Like, they got like 20 minutes into the show, said, fuck this, and they tried to guess the password. Probably not. I doubt it. Someone should try that. But I'm going to watch the trailer for the new Total Recall real quick. So, um, while while I'm thinking about it, because I actually haven't watched it yet, so I can't really. I, all I know is that it exists. Hmm. Uh. Narrate it. This Sunday. Okay, Colin Farrell's being hooked up to the machine. Oh. It's not a fucking teaser, is it? No, it's a teaser for the trailer. What the fuck? I, th- Those are fucking stupid. A lot of movies have been doing that re- lately. Like, they did that for um, Prometheus. 
That movie just looked fucking stupid anyway. So. Are you kidding me? I, I just don't really care for how it looks. Why? Do you even know what it's about? I don't... I saw the original trailer on a movie. I... I don't know. It's it's the backstory of the of the the, uh, shi- the ship and the space jockey from the very first Alien. Mm. Do you, did you not know that? No, I, I I knew that. I just I don't know it. It doesn't like I really like the idea. I really like the idea of having something that goes that far back and it's still being in canon because I mean, people don't do that anymore. It's, but it just looks really like really fucking weird. I'm stoked. I'm I'm really that's one of the biggest movies I'm looking forward to this year. Battleship. I'm that <laughs> is, that that looks so bad and stupid, but it looks like super fun movie. I'm looking forward to that one too. It looks like a Transformers Four trailer. Yeah, yeah, basically. It really and, does. I mean, uh, I'm still just amazed that they turned a board game about a strategy game about battleships into a fight against aliens. I think it was Vangelis who put it like this, but he, he said that, uh, if someone gave him, um, a couple million dollars to make a battleship movie, this is exactly what he would have done, (laughs) which is true. Like, Hey, here's, here's a quarter of a billion dollars. Go make a battleship movie. Did you watch, did you watch the men in black three trailer? I saw the first one where he jumps into the thing off the building and oh, at the end. That movie, I hope that movie fucking bombs. <laughs> oh Why? my god, this that movie is so fucking unoriginal. They have What's, oh, this the new one or the yeah. all of them all together? Men in Black Black Men in Black 3, the new one. They have these vehicles that when he goes back into the 60s, they had these vehicles that look exactly like the thing from uh, the episode, The Entity from South Park, where Mr. Garrison comes up with this. <laughs> with, have you seen that one? I. Mr. Garrison comes up with I'm this. I'm looking it up because it sounds really familiar. Of, a, of a, basically a circle uh, vehicle that goes very fast he calls it the thing or it or whatever and basically the way you get into it is like a thing goes up your ass and you have to suck on this other thing to kind of like <laughs> at the same time to get like get the thing in motion and, oh yeah and yeah you, yeah and, I've seen and, and you and you have other things in your hand you gotta jerk them off while sucking on the thing and you gotta kind of pump this thing up your ass <laughs> It's so, and they have that except for the ass fucking. Uh, they have that vehicle. They have the Man mouth Black action 3. and the hand action. <laughs> I wish, and but well, they what? Have... <laughs> trying to say <laughs> nothing. But and they have the you know the the Decepticon warships from Dark of the Moon. How they have that kind of like those dangly things. Yeah, they have those exact same ships in the trailer. Have you have you seen uh have you seen the trailer for the Avengers? Uh huh. Did you see the new, or not the newest one, but a newer one where pretty much Iron Man, everyone's kind of standing around the city, and he's like, hey guys, I'm bringing the party to you, and they're all like, what? And Iron Man comes around this building, and this fucking ship just slams through the building. Yeah. Those ships look, ex- the I, I think they're the ships with the scrolls, they look exactly like the ships from Dark of the Moon. I, I, I surprisingly do not care too much about the Avengers. I, I don't either. I just, I think... I think it's because we already know it's going to be good. We're like, yeah, just whatever. Well, let's see. I don't. I don't even think it's going to be. It's definitely going to be good. Well, the they, problem I with it is I, they can't really kill anyone, and they can't. They can't. I don't know. They don't have enough room to really do anything. I mean, uh, it looks cool. Like, of course, I'm excited for it. It's just, I'm. I'm not. It's generic. Yeah. Uh, I I I do like that it has the Incredible Hulk, who's my favorite of the Marvel uh, superheroes. Um, I got I got to find this thing for you to to show you uh the um that you, ship. Avengers. Yeah, have you seen the trailer for Snow White and the Huntsman? Um, the trailer for it? No, I saw the poster. That movie for being based on Snow White looks like it could be really good. 
Well, it's really, aren't they like the killers or something? I don't, what? Isn't it demented or something? Is what demented? The uh, the Snow White and the Seven Huntsmen. Is what? what the movie. Mean? Is it demented? Is it fucked up? Yeah, yeah. It's it's it looks. It's definitely not what you expect. I mean, what, well, the original Cinderella is a German story, where in the end of it, these birds pick out the eyes of the. Uh, well, to in the original Cinderella story, it's like I said, it's a German story. And in the midst of the uh, stepsisters trying to get their feet into the into the shoe, they cut off parts of their foot. So this one girl hacks off like a chunk of her heel, and this other girl like chops off one of her toes. That's and then up. the end of it, um, the end of it, um, these birds peck out their eyes. <laughs> so a lot of these stories really aren't for kids. It's but, just there's Disney. A, but there's another Snow White movie that's coming out called Mirror Mirror. That looks. At first, I was like, "Okay, that'll be fun," but then it just looks like this generic fucking it's stupid family movie. Yeah. yeah it, but Julia Roberts. <laughs> My dad said, "Wow, she must really need a paycheck." But the uh, Charlize Theron uh, is playing the uh, the queen and Snow White and the Huntsman. Yeah. She looks insane slash hot as hell at the same time. I don't know. I think that's enough talking about movies. Here, go uh, here. I found the trailer. Go to like, go to like two ten, and it'll and uh, after that it'll happen, and you'll you'll see how this ship looks like, the fucking darkest moon ship. All right, hold crazy. On. Two ten. Yeah. 210. It's a little bit longer, but yeah. Like everything is Transformers now. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Except more snake-like. Yeah, just longer. Uh, the main biggest problem with the whole Avengers is that I was always kind of hoping that, like, the the main villain... I mean, yeah, I was really... That Loki would be kind of like the villain for, like, most of the movie. But I was really, really hoping that the ultimate villain by the end was going to be the Hulk... Like of in, the Avengers? Yeah, of in the Avengers. Well, they were they were thinking about that, but eh. But like in the Ultimate Avengers the movie, the one that's mm-hmm. animated, they did that. While most of the movie the aliens are the villain, but by the end uh Bruce Banner tries to help out, but ultimately the Hulk gets the better of him and it's just starts going on his right and they they really uh, like the main climax of the movie is them trying to get control over the Hulk and bring him back down. And that's really what, what was my favorite part of the whole movie. But now he's like, he's just kind of uh, teaming up with them. As, as, so it seems well, the, anyway. the Well, the thing is that they led into that with the new Incredible Hulk at the end of it. He pretty much, he's learning to tame it in a way to where he can... Yeah. He's not that much of a threat. He's more of a. I all think right. a lot of people are going to be confused that it's supposed to be con- that same Hulk because of. They look Hulk. nothing alike. Edward Norton and this guy look nothing alike. Yeah. I hate the Mark Ruffalo. I it's... don't really care as long as he can pull it off, but I would have preferred yeah. Edward Norton. Edward I think Norton, if Ed... Edward Norton was the perfect Bruce Banner. Edward Norton, uh, Robert Downey Jr., Chris Hemsworth, and <laughs> Chris Evans. Those, those should be the Avengers, but. I don't understand why they brought in a Hawkeye. Just because they needed someone else. I don't really know. I don't really care. But um, I I don't know the Avengers. I'm the one movie I'm super stoked for is Spider Man. <sighs> Actually, here's something pretty cool. Uh, the Spider Man, the Amazing Spider Man. My mom's bought bo- like my mom's boss, like the she's assistant manager. And he's a manager, and she works for a law firm. It's Rodia Law, and his nephew is in the Amazing Spider-Man. He's not just some fucking extra or whatever. He's uh, he plays Gwen Stacy's little brother, really? and his name is actually like Rodia. And I don't know, it's kind of cool. He's in the trailer. He, he's just a little blonde kid. 
don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. I'm not going to see it in theaters. What if it's good? What if it's really good? I'm still not going to see it. I'm going to wait if, for it to come out on DVD. I oh, I, Dark Knight Rises. Oh, that's that's the one I'm really excited about more than uh, uh, Prometheus. Really? Yeah. It. I don't know. I. Fucking I'm not, Batman. Oh, I'm not not excited for it. The movie looks fucking amazing. I just, I can't get behind all the incredible hype for it. Uh, I'm not a Batman hype person. I'm the person that's like, Batman's fucking awesome, but I'm not going to join this little wagon of Batman's fucking cool, so let's all get pumped for Batman eight months in advance. But yeah, Batman, Bat- uh, The Dark Knight Rises looks really, really good. And the one thing that was really awesome about um, about the development is the people who work on Batman really don't care. And they don't care what people think. And... Uh, when the Dark Knight Rises really started rolling, they said, all right, we have a script. We're going to work on it. And people on the internet were all like, uh, I don't know. I don't know how well they can. I don't know. If they can't outdo the Dark Knight. And the one of the guys who I think supervised the Dark Knight, and he read both the scripts for the Dark Knight Rises and the Dark Knight. And uh, he, he, he was in an interview, or I think he made a statement. And when he did Dark Knight, he was like, all right, guys, yeah, we're going to be doing this. It looks pretty good. And when people were like, I don't know how they're going to outdo this, he came out and he was and he was like, um, guys, just as a screenplay and as a written script, The Dark Knight Rises is like five times better than The Dark Knight written. Well, so, one thing I'm really curious about, the first two Batman movies had a very good twist ending at the yeah. end that was really like kept under wraps. like No one really knew about it until the movie actually came out. The first one with uh, Liam Neeson, uh, be actually turning out to be Ra's al Ghul at the very end. Mm-hmm. With Dark Knight, the with uh, Harvey Dent actually becoming Two Face at the very end. No one knew that, not until it was released. Yeah. What do you think would be the twist ending in Dark Knight Rises, if there is one? Which I I cannot, I I I I would be really surprised if it didn't have a twist ending. Bane is Batman's dad. My my prediction is, um, which actually came through the cast, the the uh, cast credits. Mm-hmm. Liam Neeson is given a credit in Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, he he's cast as Ra's al Ghul. Now there's but two things they said. They, they said it's going to be a flashback. I'm calling bullshit on that. Yeah, because in the comic books, Ra's al Ghul was immortal. So I'm thinking that he's going to come back at the very end. And that's going to be like a big thing. Yeah. Well, and there's this uh there's this one cop in the movie. And it's Sam Blaker, I don't know. And what his name is, but he's a cop and you see him for like a brief second in the trailer, but he's getting an action figure. So that kind of makes me think he does something and it's not going to there's not going to be a Robin because uh Chris- and Chris Nolan said he would in, in any of the Batman movies that he would never ever have Robin in it. Yeah, and Christian Bale said, uh, I think after he did, yeah, after they did Batman Begins, and um, people started asking about a sequel, and they someone asked about Robin, and he said the day that Chris Nolan brings Robin on set is the day that he will not come onto the set. Yeah, <laughs> which is fucking awesome. I fuck, like Robin, but fuck Robin. Robin. Robin is like the Green Lantern. He only works in comic books. Mm. And for a while, I was, I mean, when the cast came out for The Dark Knight and found out that Heath Ledger was the Joker, Mm -hmm. I was super pissed. I thought, oh, my God, this is the fucking worst decision. (laughs) Not until, like, we saw the trailer. And I was like, then I realized how fucking brilliant it was. (laughs) Same exact thing happened. When they found out that Tom Hardy was playing Bane, the first, the only g- movie that I um, knew that Tom Hardy was in was in Star Trek Nemesis, where he played mm-hmm. a clone of uh, Patrick Picard, uh, of uh, Captain Picard, and he was real fucking skinny and kind of nerdy looking. Mm-hmm. But ever since then, he 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 became he got really fucking buff, and he's actually played in a couple of movies about. Uh, he, it, I can't remember one movie, but he played a really uh, hardcore boxer. 
Mm. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. And another movie called Warrior, um, which, uh, which I'll pull up the poster for for you so you can see it. And he's definitely real buff. And like, he has all these tattoos on him that are legit. Um, and he was in the new uh, uh, make. Oh, what the fuck is it called? One with Reese Witherspoon. Uh, this means war. He was in that, and you can kind of see how big he is in that too. But and it and he's supposedly got like gained another thirty pounds of muscle for Bane, which totally pulls it off because he's a brick shit house, but he's a reasonable looking brick shit house. He's not like cartoonish like the Bane was in Batman and Robin, which uh, is no, fucking no, retarded. Don't, don't talk. Yeah. But he, that's him on the left in that picture of Warrior. Uh, let me see. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the really kind of messed up thing it was well, in an interview... Uh, they s- asked him if he ever at a lot. There's like a lot of rumors going around that he was gay. And yeah. in an interview, someone asked him if he ever, if he ever, um, you know, did it, yeah. uh, it out in out with a dude. And his mm-hmm. qu- and his exact quote. Actually, let me find if I can find the exact quote. Um, they asked him if he ever slept with men or if he was bisexual, and he said. That he has played with everything and anyone and everyone, but now that he's in his thirties, he's done experimenting. That's weird. <laughs> everything and everyone. What the hell? It's like dogs and cows and like that. That but wait, he says everything. Horses. When when that's well, some people. I don't know. But yeah, he's he's. I think he's going to be a great fucking bane. He's super. I don't know. Super cool. And they, had, they actually did have a pre-order. Uh, BBTS did put up pre-orders for Dark Knight Rises Movie Masters. Yeah, which... They're making Alfred. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> what an Alfred toy. <laughs> yeah. That, that was very unexpected. But I'm definitely wanting to get Bane. And um, I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to get Catwoman and Batman. and The thing is... Alfred. Uh, unless she does something like super uh, relevant to the movie. I I think I'm thinking that she's kind of a useless character. Just well, to here's what I think it. happens. I think cuz Bruce Wayne is definitely in this some sort of prison thing in the movie. I think and there's definitely more than one person driving these vehicles in in the movie cuz you see the uh the tumbler and then you see uh the the batwing or whatever they're going to call it in the in the back flying. So mm-hmm. what I think goes on is pretty much you see her, uh, Anne Hathaway and Christian Bale in a scene at first. I think it comes out that he's Batman, and Bane beats the shit out of him, throws him away, blocks away the key, and um, Bruce Wayne pretty much trusts... what? What's her name in the story? Catwoman's name? Selina Kyle. Yeah, there you go. Tells Selina, and she's pretty much covering up for Batman, and pretty much... While he's in jail, and I, I wonder if they're gonna go with where when when uh Bane snapped Batman's back. Maybe because he did that in the comics. He snapped his yeah. back and left him for dead. Another uh interesting thing is like in the in the movie masters pre-orders, they have one specifically marked "to be determined secret figure." Could be Ra's al Ghul. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Well, didn't wasn't he in the uh, mansion when it burned down? No. He was on a, uh, a conveyor train. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's and he, right. And, yeah. He, and he crashed into a building, and the building exploded. Yeah, yeah he could be all, like, fucked up. Mm-hmm. I, I'm thinking he's, like, the the real, the real, like, head leader of this little group that Bane's in. That would make sense. But that would really suck, though, because the, the great thing about, like, the Dark Knight was... Like you, you were like, okay, that's Harvey Dent, that's Two Face. But you, even when they're in the fucking like, when him and Rachel are in the those um things about to you know blow up, 
you you had no idea that he was about to become two face. No. And that was awesome. Like even when he's laying on his side with the oil on that side of his face, you're not thinking two face. But it's not till he rolls over and half his head's on fire that you're like, dude, fuck. Mm -hmm. Like, me and my dad, like, fucking freaked out watching that movie. Like, holy shit. And that's, like, if this is all true, then we've kind of, like, guessed it all. And that kind of takes the fun out of these movies where they keep it secret. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's something, like, way out of left field that would still be awesomely hardcore and really makes the trilogy. But... I'm looking forward to that movie. Movie Master's Case of Six. We get, uh, never mind, fuck that. One Alfred, two Banes, and three Batmans. <laughs> I'm looking for a set of, like, all of them. Because there's, yeah, there's a to be, uh, to be determined figure. That, that could probably be, like, a figure that they want the sixth spot, but they don't know who to put in it. But, I don't know. Um, there's the to be determined figure, Catwoman, Batman, Alfred, Blake, and Bane. And there's, yeah... Um, Catwoman goggles up. <laughs> I think I think this is a wrap. Uh, goggles up, guys. Goggles up. That's, That's the name it. of this episode. Yep. No, it's not. <laughs> it is. Should be. I never get to pick the titles. Only the passwords. Um. Send in your questions to questions. Pr- primecastquanda at gmail dot com. Primecast Q and A at gmail.com please make sure it's a question please make it not lame please send in everyone send in a question we need more questions please just a question like hey what what's your favorite color like that'll work um like legitimate questions not just like not filler questions and if it's personal like uh something for your youtube page for your youtube page i don't know if we can i don't know if we can answer that um or if you're asking us to to check out your videos, we I don't know if we can do that. Um, no. So we, we can't really do that. But if it's like, hey, what's your opinion on this? Or what do you think of this? Even you know, provide a picture or something or, you know, maybe. So. Mm-hmm. And uh, follow me at Twitter at twitter.com slash sjautobot. And you can find my videos here on this channel. Follow me on Twitter at Anakinvader. And please follow. Uh, follow. follow my reviews. Follow. And uh, follow, follow, and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Anakin Vader. All right. Everyone, have a good week. See you next time. Primecast episode 13.